Magic Masks. They're a brand new feature with Individual Resolve 17, and they're awesome. See that text behind me? I masked that out using Magic Masks in literally seconds. It's really, really cool. Now, Magic Masks are only available within the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. They're not available within the free version. Now, this video isn't really an in-depth tutorial. I'm still getting to grips with it myself, but I've had a play and I wanted to give you a quick introduction or overview of Magic Masks and how they work with a few interesting demonstrations as well. So, my name's Alex. You're watching Mr. Alex Tech. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve and we're on the Edit tab. And I've got a couple of examples I want to show you. So the first one is this. It's a relatively simple bit of footage. It's about 20 seconds of me just talking to camera. So we're going to give it a click and then we're going to jump into the color tab. From this little menu in the middle of the screen, you want to select this icon, which is the magic mask. And then we've got all of our controls down here. Now, the first thing you want to make sure you've got person and then features at the top left. So you can either select to track an individual person or some of that individual features. So if we click on features, we've got things like arms, clothing, face, hair, hat, legs, shoes, and torso. We'll come back to the, those in a moment. We're going to use person for now. We've got some playback controls in the middle and we've got some selection controls over on the right. Under there, you've got quality, faster and better. And then you've got some refinement tools under there. So first things first, we're going to go to person. We're going to select this little dropper with the plus and we're gonna turn this icon on over on the right, which will mean that we can see our overlay and so we'll know what's been selected. I'm gonna find a point where I think it'll be nice and easy to track or pick up the subject, so I'm just gonna go with here. And we just need to draw a little mark anywhere on the subject. And straight away, it's picked me up. Now there's no cuts there, that was all real time, and it's actually done a pretty damn good job. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and you can see there's a bit of an edge going on here. So we're going to refine that slightly. Now, I will be totally honest, I'm not 100% sure what all of these controls do. I'm just working my way through them as we speak. But the one I have noticed, which is really useful, is the blur radius. So it's a really harsh line there at the moment. If we just increase that blur, let's go with about 50. It's added a nice blur to it, and that will give us a nice, smoother, better looking mask. So now all of this is obviously just for this one frame. So then we just need to track it through the entirety of the clip. So my playhead is there at the moment. If we just hit play to play forwards, and that will track all the way through to the end of the clip. Now I'm letting that run in real time so you can see how long it'll actually take. There you go, a couple of seconds. We're gonna move our playhead back, and then we're just gonna hit the reverse play to play back to the beginning of the clip. And again, it'll just go through doing any tracking that we need it to do. Now, for those interested, my PC is a Ryzen 5 3600, 32 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 2060. So with those specs, you can see roughly how this is performing. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty quick. It's done a really clever job. And there you go, that's done. So let's turn this overlay off. And now that it's got this track done, we can just do whatever we want within the color tab, but it'll only apply to everything within the mask. So let's just do some silly things. We'll just adjust the offset, add some color. We can adjust temperatures, tints, contrast, the color boost. We can use any of the color wheels. If we go into the curves, I can obviously add some contrast this way. And as you can see, it's only affecting me. It's not affecting the background at all because the background was outside of the mask. If we go into the blur, I can add some sharpness so I can sharpen me up. And there you go. If we hit play, it's doing a really, really great job of just applying those things to whatever was in the mask. And there you go. Now there's another really handy thing you can do. Let me just reset all of those changes that I made. We're gonna go back into the magic mask and you've got this icon here, which will invert your selection. So I'll turn on my overlay so we can see what's selected and then I'll invert it. And now you can see everything is selected except for me. So again, what you could then do, let me turn the overlay off. We'll add a little bit of contrast to the background so it pops out a little bit more. And then what we're gonna do, go to the blur button, which is this one here. I'm just gonna increase that to add some blur. And now we've got a blurrier background. And again, if we hit play, it's doing a really, really great job of just applying the blur to the background with me popping out in front of it. 
Right, now we're back in the color tab with this clip and I just wanna give you one other example of how you could use this magic mask. So I've got me mask, it's all ready to go. What we're gonna do on the node here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add an alpha output and then just gonna drag this little blue dot down to the little blue circle. And what that will do is completely cut me out and get rid of the background and the background will be transparent. Then if we jump back into the edit tab, I'm gonna just drag this up a couple of tracks. We'll grab the original, put that down on track one grab some text, put it on this middle track, track number two, make this a little bit bigger. It's a really nice, quick, easy, and very, very effective way of cutting out your person so that you can put text behind them. So now I've got text, which I can customize. It looks like it's behind me. You could do that if someone was walking past, you could do it in the street scene, you could do loads of really clever stuff with it by tracking really quickly and easily using the magic masks. Really cool. Right, let's delete all of that, and I've got another example for you. And this time we're going to go with this one. This is just a lady running on the street. She's bouncing around, there's far more movement. So let's see how it handles this one. Same thing, give it a click, jump it to color. We're going to jump straight into magic mask, person with the plus, and then we'll just draw a little line. Let's have a look at the overlay. Yep, yeah, it's found her perfectly. Let's play this backwards. It's tracking. We've left it on faster again and there you go, it's done. We'll turn off the overlay. Let's just take the gain down and you can see it's doing a pretty good job once again. So let's just reset this one. Rather than selecting the entire person this time, I'm gonna to go to features. And let's select face, draw a little marker on the face. We'll turn the overlay on. And you can see this time it's just selected her face rather than selecting the entire person. So then we could track the face. If we choose the drop down again, let's select hair this time. We'll draw a little line on the hair. And as you can see, now it's selected the hair as well. And then we could track both the face and the hair. If I now just make another node, and then for this one, we're gonna to go to features and we're gonna select a clothing top. Little line on the top and it's selected all of her clothing. So again, we can track that all the way through. Remember, we're just tracking her top. This won't track her hands a neck, a face, or anything else at all. It's purely the clothes that she's wearing. And then again, let's just give her a different color top. And there you go. Now she's wearing orange. And in all my testing that I've been doing, it's working really, really well. It's not perfect. You can see there's a bit of a mask going on here, but overall, for how quick it's doing it, it's incredibly clever. I'm really, really impressed with it. Now, one last thing I want to show you, let's delete that one and add this one instead. So obviously this isn't a person, this is a dog. And it does seem to work on animals as well. So let's just try and do the same thing. Jump into color. We're back on magic mask. I'm gonna select person, even though obviously it isn't a person. We're just gonna draw a line on the dog. And there you go. Seems to have picked up the dog pretty quick. We'll hit play. And then we'll just go back as well. And there you go, seems to have done a pretty good job. Let's just turn the overlay off. We'll go into curves. Again, we can just add that contrast. We'll sharpen that up a bit as well. Let's just refine the mask with the blur. We've gone from this to this really quickly, really easily with, let's be honest, pretty much zero effort. And then what we could do for this example, I'm just gonna add a serial node. I'm gonna copy all the effects over to this new node. And then what we're gonna do is just invert it, same as before. I'm gonna get rid of my curves. I don't actually want the curves. What we're gonna do instead of sharpening it, just gonna blur it like so. And then I'm also gonna to go to my window. I'm gonna add a gradient because obviously at the moment it looks unrealistic with everything blurred. We'll just have the background blurred, but the concrete looking about right. Then if we go to edit, we've got something that looks like that. So our dog has way more contrast and sharpness. We've blurred the background, we've added a gradient, and it's doing overall a pretty great job. Obviously you'd want to refine it a little bit, but for the time it took or the effort we put in, it's really, really clever. And that's it for this one. I hope this video was useful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Any comments, feedback, thoughts, whatever, put them down in the comments section below.
If you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you wanna see some more DaVinci Resolve stuff, maybe some tech videos and the odd vlog here and there, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. Take it easy, I'll catch you next time. See ya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.